morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Today we continue our studies in the book of Colossians. We have completed the introductory studies and here in lesson 3 we're up to Colossians chapter 1 verse 1. Let's read now Colossians 1 verse 1 through 3. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy our brother to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossa. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Here in the opening, Paul affirmed his apostleship. This asserts his authority to speak to the matters that he wishes to address. You may recall from our introductory studies that we talked about the fact that in the Colossian letter, Paul wants to talk about the threat of false teachers and false teaching that was coming to the church there at Colossa. And of course, under such a threat, him being able to assert his apostolic authority would help with his credibility. It is of note that Paul was not alone when he wrote this letter, but Timothy was there with him and Timothy is uh, portrayed here as a co-author of the epistle, though we think, of course, of Paul as its primary author. Paul mentioned here his prayers for the church. He said, we give thanks to God for you, and we pray always for you. Paul thanked God for his Christian associates. You'll find a similar statement in Philippians 1, verse 3 and 4. And this speaks to the closeness that we should have in Christ, where we think of people not only in our immediate circle of influence or our immediate circle of where we live, but even outside of that, and Christians that we know from other places around the world. And this uh, closeness that we should have in Christ should precipitate us being thankful to God for one another. Not only thanking God for each other, but praying earnestly for one another, as Paul had done here for the church at Colossa. We know from the Philemon letter, which we hope to study in the future, that Paul had close relationships with some of the people there. Philemon, in particular, was a close friend and associate of Paul. So when you have people like that, that, that your relationship is forged in the love of Christ, as it should be, we can't help but be genuinely thankful to God and pray for these people and for their well-being. Moving on now to verse 4, he said, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of your love for all the saints. So here Paul talks about what he had heard about them. And this is something that we discussed in the introductory studies where Paul had received word from messengers about the status of the church. Now some imply from this that Paul hadn't actually been to Colossa when they were converted, but had heard of their conversion conversion and felt compelled to write. And that's certainly a possibility. Uh, we talked about in our introductory studies, uh, go back and listen to the re, uh, previous two studies, we talked about the fact that there were others who had worked with Paul in the region of Phrygia and may have helped to bring the gospel there. But we're careful to notice that Paul used similar language about hearing of someone's faith when he talked about places that we know that he had been, Ephesus, in Thessalonica, for example. And we have record of Paul being at Thessalonica in Acts chapter 17. We have record of him being at Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. And yet later on, he used the language of having heard of their faith. So this more likely refers to the word that he had received from messengers. Colossians 1, 7 and 8, it seems that Epaphras was at least one of the primary messengers that had brought Paul word of the status of the church there. Continuing in verse 5, he said, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel. Here, he had celebrated their faith and love. He had heard about their faith and love, which we just read in verse 4. But they sustained that faith and love because of their hope. So this shows us that hope is central to our spiritual help. Romans chapter 8 and 24 says we are saved by hope. Hope is essential 
to keep us anchored in Christ. And in use of that word anchor, think of Hebrews 6 verse 18 and 19 where the Hebrew writer says that hope is the anchor for our souls. And in this text before us in Colossians 1, Paul said that hope is laid up in heaven. And this is similar to language that Peter later used about our hope being reserved in heaven. So when we think about our hope that's reserved in heaven, it's not centered in material earthly things, but our hope is centered in heavenly things. When we stay uh, focused on that hope, that helps us to sustain our faith and our love. That's the reward for which we strive. And the saints at Colossae had learned of this hope from God's word. He said, you had heard about this hope in the word of the truth of the gospel. It's the word of God that brings us this hope. Later in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23, he mentions them having heard about this hope. God doesn't lay this upon our hearts through a direct working of the Spirit. God informs us of this hope through the preaching of the gospel. And that's why it's so important that we focus our lives and our ministry on sharing the word of God with others. Continuing now in Colossians 1 verse 6, he said, speaking of God's word, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. So here as the gospel goes out, it goes out and brings fruit. And Paul said in this statement here that the gospel had gone out to all the world. And that's what Jesus told his disciples to do in Matthew 28 is take the gospel to all the world. Later in this uh, chapter in Colossians, he affirms that the gospel has gone to all the world. And so we're mindful of the importance of that message going out and the effect of that gospel message, that the gospel message bears fruit when it falls into the hearts of obedient hearers. So this fruit includes the kind of love and faith that they had there at Colossae. Their uh, holding strong to this love and this faith was the evident fruit of the power of God's word to change people's lives. Continuing now in verse 7 and 8, as you also learn from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, who also declared to us your love in the spirit. So this speaks of Epaphras that we believe was the messenger that had brought Paul word while in prison in Rome about uh, the status of the Colossian congregation. And it says they had also heard about the gospel from Epaphras. Now, the, there are those who say Epaphras was the one who started the church at Colossae, that Paul was not involved. We've talked about this. And it's certainly possible that Paul, uh, that Epaphras was involved in that work. In fact, it's evident that he was because here he says that they had heard about the gospel from Epaphras, but it says they also heard about it from Epaphras. So saying this suggests that Epaphras was not the only gospel messenger to bring the word to Colossae. Perhaps Paul was involved, perhaps Timothy was involved, for he had traveled with Paul in that region at that time. The point of observing these things is to show that the effort to bring the gospel to the world is a team effort carried out by God's people. Friends, we've got to work together and share in the duties of carrying the urgent message of the gospel to the lost and bringing this hope to the lost. Colossians 4 and 12 says Epaphras was from Colossus, so at whatever point and in whatever way he linked up with Paul and became associated with him in learning of the work of the gospel, he shared those abilities and that work with the saints at Colossa. The sharing of the word of God, so central to who we are as the people of God. And that's why we carry out this ministry here at Beginning the Word of sharing the word of God with you. And I'm so glad and so thankful to God that you've joined us for today's study. And as we've begun today in the Word, 
I pray that you'll live out today and every day in the mighty word of God. Thank you and God bless.